We hope that you did enjoy that edition of Johnny's Bites. And uh, we also have to inform you, as your election command center, we have a special edition of uh, the coverage of the U.S. elections later in the day or overnight. We know that many of the states are now waking up till the morning. The, they'll be uh, within the period of the dawn of the day. And if you know how the U.S. election also works, it also means that they, 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 they vote sometimes earlier through the mail and, and through electronic means, etc. Very advanced means of voting as well. And um, that said, let me also say that you have to cash out. It goes with a short code, star 439 hash. With star 439 hash, you have money credited into your mobile money account. You're in a great position to always increase the number of chances you have by choosing option two. I can already see the dashboard, and I uh, see that you have to incrementally uh, know that you have to increase the number of tickets you have and then also get to the point where when we do the draws, today we're willing to give at least about 8,000 Ghana cities to eight lucky winners, 1,000 each. And you know, it's always a build up to the mega jackpot, which is when you choose option eight on Friday, you get to win big. The last two weeks, uh, we, we, we've been on a frenzy, giving out over 30,000 Ghana cities in excess, 5,000 Ghana cities in various sums, 10,000 Ghana cities in numerous sums as well. And for 40 to 60 other people, 200 Ghana cities each. And that is how we do it right here on TV3 New Day to make sure that we, we also make you part of everything that we're doing when it comes to the right things to get money credited into your mobile money account. So make sure you cash out star 439 hash right now and let's have some great conversations. Today, we want to put into perspective the youth uh, interaction or connect that was undertaken by Dr. Mahmoud Baumea, DMV It Is Possible 2024, took place in, in that great uh, sports complex in Baltimore. Uh, number of resounding attendance by young people associated with the ruling MPP, and it was not only physical or personal, but also virtual as well. So that's a good thing. And I want to also just oppose that with early on what the youth manifesto of the NDC is and what choices that uh, are available for you just 32 days to the next election. And as you know, your election command center, 3news.com, will bring you the latest when it comes. I have with me Alfred Thompson. Alfred Thompson is with the DMB It Is Possible 2024 campaign team. And good morning to you. And I love your pendant. Thank you, Robert. At first, when I, I was seeing it at first glance, I thought um, it, it was um, a picture of the Pope. Not knowing it, uh, it was a picture of Dr. Mahmoud Obama. Yeah. Great one there. I think I love it. Yes, thank you. That, this pendant is beautiful. Thank you. Certainly. And, and greetings, that, greetings from him. No, from, from him. Yeah. Dr. Mahmoud Obama, good morning into, to you. He's moving into the Ashanti region. He's moving into the yeah, Ashanti so region. Is that the last Ashanti. lap or no, no, no. he'll be going there? No, no, no. That's Again. Just okay. before the last lap. Okay. We have four more weeks. Two, four four, so four more weeks. Yeah, he has about some very good few days to finish the ashanti and move on fantastic we'll and see how that goes doing a wonderful work i ask for god's blessings onto his life onto the life of samira onto the life of napo and the wife you know, they are doing very fast fantastic jobs mm -hmm. and it's not easy rain or shine he's in there fighting and making sure that what he wants to do for the ordinary man on the street mm -hmm. he's spelling it out to them one after another with no insult with no ambiguity that he's ang angered by anybody. He's told everyone there have been challenges. He has had sleepless nights when he needed to transform and change certain policies to help rebuild the Ghana he knows and make it better for all of us. And he, I can promise you that, inshallah, if everything goes well, uh, when they crown him as the president of this republic, you will see the Ghana we all deserve. Fantastic. And your posts are telling you that he's winning, right? Inshallah. Mashallah, sure. Alhamdulillah. And then also, uh, Malik Basintali is here, the Basintali boy, as uh, John Dramani Mahama called him. Yeah, you go on social media, <laughs> he's now called the fireman, the Basintali boy. Had been on the campaign trail, riding motorbikes, supporting various candidates and the various campaigns of uh, his party. He's here, Malik Basintali. Good morning to you, Malik. What offense have we committed that we cannot? get the Ghana we all want. How do you mean? As said by Alfred Thompson. He said that we should vote for Baomia so we can finally get the Ghana we all want. What offense have we committed? That for eight years, you and Baomia couldn't give us the Ghana we wanted. In fact, 
Ever since Baumia was elected flag bearer, it's been more than one year now. Why haven't you given us the Ghana we want? On 7th January 2025, three things will be done. Inshallah, John Mahama will be sworn in as the next president. Number two, every Ghanaian will be issued a certificate of survival. Number three, we will all move straight to Quick Loan and thank Quick Loan for holding all the youth of this country up. I said it and I repeat it. More than 80% of Ghanaians today survive on Quick Loan. And that is why anytime you intend sending money to a young man, he says not this number, another number. Meaning what they all, mistake, they, they all on, the, on the other number? People who work, people who take salaries. Within two weeks, the salary is gone. Quick loan has held us up. Mal Maliki was just beating. 21 gun salutes. Oh, cool, cool it for me this and one, so, please. Alfred, if there is any Ghana you think you can you give us in 2025, please, respectfully, give us that Ghana now. We want it now. Baumia is in power. I have you, never. You and let me land on this. I beg your pardon. When he was speaking, I never interrupted. It was just an introduction. I'm coming. Just a minute. Respectfully. Respectfully. With the greatest of respect. Today. You see, I... I have never in my life mm -hmm. seen a presidential candidate mm -hmm. campaign against his own government mm -hmm. and pleading that you should give him another chance so that that failed government he's campaigning against will now come and give us a better Ghana. I've mm -hmm. never seen it. In 2012, if you remember, to land on this, the NDC's campaign slogan was continuing the better Ghana agenda. You remember, Roland? No. You know why it was so? Because President Mahama was proud of his record. He was proud of one million tons in cocoa production. He was proud of a stabilized city. He was pr proud of a stabilized, I mean, stabilization of the fuel prices and all of that. Why is it that for the first time, Malam Baumia is running away from his own record? Is this not bizarre? And so, look, you cannot in any way try to repackage a condemned commodity for us to buy. Baumia, you have to end it. I, I was only saying hello to you. In the history of this country, should we ever have a vice president or a president like Baumia and Nanado? Because the two pair are Aki and Popo, a condemned team forever and ever in the history of Well, the voters will decide. And that will be on the 7th of December. We are your election command center. I'm a voter. That's what, Am I not a voter? Well, you're a voter. So that's, I will that's, decide, decide that's what we decide. We do, and then let's take you through some of uh, the interactions and the key policies. Well, already in the manifesto, but also re-echoed and additional ones promised by Dr. Mahmoud Dubami. Establishment of a hundred million dollar fintech fund for startups within the sector. Implement a buy Ghana first policy. Increase investment in STEM education. And STEM is science, technology engineering and mathematics involve young people in formal political process more participation dr mahmoud Dubamia is promising free tertiary education scholarship for persons with disabilities increase the stock of student accommodation in universities and across public uh, institutions within the sector expand eligibility for the student loan scheme to include all post-secondary students, introduce a flat tax system that has also been announced by Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and then increasingly announced that Youth Connect. We also have a number of them as well. But what are the posts saying? We'll take you through a number of what the projections have been. Global Info Analytics saying that, well, uh, based on what they've picked up, a number of uh, things on what Ghanaians are saying. And then we saw earlier on what Afrobarometer had indicated. For ordinary Ghanaians, indicating what's on their mind, what will be the key benchmarks, why they want to vote for. So we have the economy, 74%, jobs, 68%, education. And if you look at that Afrobarometer report, and then this one is for Global Info Analytics, at least we have over 80% of Ghanaians saying that free SHS needs to be maintained. And 82% in the Afrobarometer say that Ghana is headed in the wrong direction. But healthcare is also critical for uh, those data that had been picked up by Global Info Analytics and roads. You know that we've established a number of uh, uh, issues about year for roads one, year for roads two, year for roads three. Now, subsequently, let's look at the last slide and also uh, look at it. Again, when the next round of this. Uh, information was picked up on the 26th of October. This was it. Economy, number one, 78%. Jobs, 70%. Education, 46%. Roads, 25%. And healthcare, 14
What do you say? Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia says that everything is in order. He is going to improve on what perhaps hasn't gone so well, how the economy has had a downturn. He says it's COVID, Russia, Ukraine, and uh, Alfred Thompson. The verdict is out there. Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, is he the man for young people to create the jobs? Thank you, Roland, and a good morning to you once again. I was just making a point when my brother did not accept that I should speak because he thought I was interjecting him. You well, remember you were, actually. in 26... No, he mentioned my name and I just wanted to draw his attention mm. to the fact that... He didn't mention your name derogatorily. He just no, made a reference I say to he did. No. But I'm saying that... That's what I want you to interject. You call me, without into, truthfulness, you call me into a conversation. And the conversation was that, you remember in 2016, when we were campaigning all across, even in front of your own... Just here, flag, the Flagstaff House. Kennedy Jipon said the grass was even suffering from water. It wasn't only that electricity Ghanaians were suffering from water. I don't understand. That's him, Kennedy Jipon. The grass, the grass, I'm coming. Dr. Mahmoud oh, Obama, you did the economic management team or, had killed the country. Are you interjecting me or you want me to talk? Okay, please go ahead. Thank go you ahead, very much. Ahead, if you are doing a debate with me, then I can also come on a debate with you. But if you want me I'm to I'm not speak, doing a debate Yes, with you are asking me questions and I speak. So give me the chance to speak. Please go Thank ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. The grass in front of Jubilee House was brown. He said they were even suffering from malnutrition, water. That a president at that time sat in front of Jubilee House and could not even give grass water to grow. But today, look at the place. When I was coming, I was looking at the frontage and I said, this is beautiful. It, it gives you the impression, the image that we want to create as a country, that we are going on the right trajectory, even with all the challenges we are facing. So, my brother should not go there when we are talking about people who cannot manage and people who we know from Adam that they are very, very corrupt and they, 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 they are misleading this country into a place that we shouldn't have gone and they want to come back for it. Please, let's not go there. Dr. Baumia on Sunday met the youth of this country across the country. Every region was involved. Um, if you are watching, you could see that um, they mentioned from greater accra right down through the northern to upper east upper west central region my own region western western north and um, bono bono east and um, ashanti volta ot everybody was involved they were listening to wisdom they wanted to hear the man of the moment they wanted to hear the man who is taking them into the next gen z generation someone who understands and appreciates that digitalization is part of growing an economy it's not that digitalization is separate from economy it's not someone who will come and stand there and insult but someone who will come and stand there and tell you what he has to offer with humility with acceptance that yes we started very well there came challenges and when the challenges came what did we do we moved and made sure that we did not sleep and say that oh but he worked hard to make sure that he would not be called a magician as someone was asking for that i'm not a magician to create jobs but he worked hard to make sure that we created over two million jobs he mentioned them and he gave the various sectors that the jobs have been created he gave the various pointers that we have done and have improved upon let me start with the educational system since uh, we started the SHS and the TVET enrollment, it has increased, the enrollment has increased by 83%. Every year, senior high school, over 600,000 children who, have, who would have been dropouts are now have been enrolled since 2017. And it tells you that we are building the next generation. Because the most important thing you can do for any, any uh, what do you call it, any society, is to make sure that you educate the people if you don't have the right education for them if you don't do the right things or if you don't care about the education what what you're going to do is that you are going to grow a base where people don't know their uh, ways and they are what they are going to do and then they just sit down and go into any other venture because the bible even tells us i mean when you when there's the weak or slow minds they sit down and they do whatever they want to do but once you have made your mind that listen Rain or shine, I, I am going to work, invest. Uh, the, the devil, the devil find, finds work for the for idle hands. hands. Yeah, it's the same like, mm. like being interpreted. Mm. But when you educate people, at least they have a basic future that they can work upon. Education became free. Even when people were marching on the streets and telling us that it was a 419 scam. Even when the presidential candidate of a party, the president at that time, 
was telling Ghanaians that we cannot um, do free SHS on the whisker caprices of a desperate politician. We took it upon ourselves. That no matter what, if that is the last thing we have to do to make sure that we educate over 600,000 children more in the former position education. was that it should be done incrementally. What is incrementally? Roland, what is incrementally? It says building when 600,000 children would have been staying at home every year, multiplied by the eight years, over 600,000 children would have been at home. Don't know what they have to do. And you tell me that, oh, let's do it incrementally. Incrementally how? When we did this um, uh, free education, you remember before we took power, BEC, children were equipped and were sent home that if you don't come and pay your fees, if you don't come and pay for the BEC, you cannot sit for exams. Today, we don't hear that. Under the presidency of Dana Kufado and Dr. Bomi, we don't hear that people are being sent home just for the fees or the BEC that they have to pay for. Because certain measures have been put in place. When people were being um, taught even how to answer past questions, what were they saying? They said they were being lazy. When they came out with flying colors across West Africa, they were telling us that eh, these um, children are what? They are, they are stealing in exams. They are being copycats. They are, they are not being taught the right thing. And the, this thing, exams are this thing. They are, being, they, are, they are stealing for them, actually, more or less. Telling the children who had suffered, some people who had bent the midnight oil to learn and get to that stage and get good um, grades that they were lazy and they were being taught nothing. You see, so it tells you the type of leadership as against the one currently looking at making sure that education is a key and is a must. Then you move to the STEM that you talked about, science, technology, uh, engineering, engineering, and mathematics. mathematics. You know STEM is free. Once others are putting it in their manifesto that they are going to make STEM free, they don't know that STEM was, is even free. It tells you that they don't even read to appreciate what is happening in the country. It tells you that they are not ready to say because they want to do things on their own whims and caprices. And when you go and say, they will tell you that you are stupid. It doesn't matter. Let us be stupid, but we'll be stupid in helping that child. We'll be stupid in educating that child. We'll be stupid in making sure that that child will not sit at home, but will get good education and come out with flying colors. Like the guy who um, we sent outside to continue his education, and he's flying out over there in, 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 in super colors. He's showing that even when you go outside, you can make it with distinction. But not by someone who is sitting there thinking that you are cheating in exams or you are stealing or they are marking for, for and on, on your behalf. So I will tell you, um, Roland, that whether they like it or not, the money we've spent on education so far is enormous. In STEM alone, Dr. Bamiya has said that he's going to increase the funding in um, science, technology, education. engineering, mm. and mathematics education. Because it, we've seen that as paramount. It helps. The basics, the basics should be very solid. If the foundation is solid, the rest will be easy to go upon. And so we are not going to rest. We are not going to sit down and watch anyone do or say or do what they want to do. At the end of the day, if you are able to do this and do it well, as you are giving them the free STEM education, as you are giving them the free TVET, TVET is another place that we've invested a lot. And people don't know that TVET is free. A lot of people don't know that uh, the technical vocational educational training that you are giving today is free so they are saying that oh when you come we'll make tvet free but people are getting tvet for free as we speak today so if you finish your shs and maybe you want to go and do some vocational things you can go and learn and you'll be supported to start your own business that is the thinking of the bold solutions that you are looking forward to the future of this country we are looking to make sure that that young man over there that young girl over there that young child will not fall short because maybe the parents died, because maybe the parent hasn't got money, because maybe the parent could not do certain things right for him or her, but they will be able to stand on their feet and go to school and finish and come out and start their own business. That is the education we need to give to every child. And we will not rest on our earths to make sure that every child will have the best education that is needed. I'll call on Ghanaians, I'll plead with them that those who have enjoyed the free education, those whose children have enjoyed it, the children who have enjoyed it, they should let others too enjoy it. Because when you tell me that you are going to reset to when you were in power and you don't even recognize what your predecessor did for you, but you claim all the projects in your name and you come and tell me that you are resetting, which means that you are going to tell us that free education is 419. 
So you are going to reset it. It's only up to Ghanaians. When did they say that? Oh, that when they say education they is for one eye. You haven't seen the free education for one I'm asking you a specific question, match. Mr. Alfred Thompson. You saying, didn't see you, the over 80 adverts they did that free education was a hoax. So Ghanaians should not believe please, you, in the you free education. You made a submission that they yeah. said free education was 419. And we all know play, the position. I can play the video we for all you. We all know the, the position. I can send it to you so that you play for everyone. Please, we all know the position mm -hmm. of the former president mm -hmm. and then his government. Was that... Free education at the, at the secondary school that should be, should be incrementally done. In 2016, go and check when you were I, I'm saying that we all know. It's, it's and, public knowledge. Yes, so I, am telling you, it is for I am telling you that I have the video of when they were even going for a, a, a match and they were matching that free education 419, free education 419. They were telling us that they would not do free education on the des for, for a desperate politician. And so if I'm telling you today that they said they are going to reset this country to when they were in power, all they are telling us is that that free education, that over 600,000 children that are now in the formal educational sector should be scrapped. And it's up to Ghanaians to decide whether they want this or they want that old system where even water and electricity was a problem. Uh, we have an Anaya Asapon with the movement for check. Good morning to you, Anaya Asapon. How are you? I'm doing well. well great. Uh, uh, Malik. And, and you, you, you take a look at the rebuttal, and they say education is a fulcrum of DMB or Dr. Mahmoud Baumia's focus on young people. Apart from the other announcement he's made about FinTech, 100 million, and, and all that, CODES program, 1 million, etc. What do you say? You see, when Alfred began, I knew he was going to misfire. I knew he was going to tombe. So, from where he started, I knew he had lost the argument. You are bragging that you've done a lot in this country. And you know the achievement? The grass at the Flagstaff house is so green and bright. That is your achievement. Somebody cannot pay trotro fare this morning. And say, it's beautiful. They have painted the Flagstaff house. The grasses are green. When you were in power, the grasses were brown. My goodness. And this is somebody we should listen to take a broom sweep all what he said put it on a collector and tell me one single hope he inspired in the young man watching him this morning you see mr alfred thompson this thing of baumia you've put around your neck it will give you trouble i don't lie because you are clearly misfiring like baumia misfired on the podium look could your children asked him a simple question what was the question he said sir you claim you have put up systems and built institutions and all of that yet unemployment is on the rise did you listen to the answer he gave him he said you see the problem is about land titling we need to title our lands and register our lands in this country my goodness is it i think Alaji Baumia had a workman in his ears or he was listening to another radio station workman yes i i'm certain look i'm the Aldebra asked him a question and let me quote him i mean deborah said anytime i use the airport airport staff ask me usually request for some money and when you ask them why they say they're underpaid what solution do you have to solve the issue of bidet being well paid you know the answer Allah about me i gave him he said you know tvet is now free and when you attend tvet we'll train you in welding and train you in carpentry is this is this the character who wanted to debate president mahama is this is, are these the answers he wanted to face the nation builder president mahama look he would have been embarrassed he should thank his stars that president mahama didn't debate him Ghanaians would have seen that he's as empty as everything look if we didn't have any president or a flag bearer like john mahama trust me any time baumia spoke we would have lost about 100 lives in suicide cases you know why uh, because you just his message is as hopeless his message is as visionless his message is directionless and people would have just watched him on tv wake up in the morning and commit suicide but the only thing holding the Ghanaian youth today is that there's a nation builder president mama who inspires hope in them every morning look clearly the mpp has nothing for Ghanaian youth the ndc we launched our manifesto carved out a youth manifesto and named it the pledge launched it again for Ghanaian youth that social contract where it was distributed to all Ghanaian youth so they know what president mama has for them my brother where is your youth manifesto show me your youth manifesto 
You just get up and go and stand somewhere, mount the podium, and uh, pre ask President Mahama when he was vice president, well, what did he also do? Is that why the Ghanaian youth were listening to you? Unemployed NAPCO trainees, they want to hear something from you. Speak hope to them. Mr. Baumia, this fanfare or Dominican and Bemo, it, it must come to a stop, please. Respectfully. Napo, you oh CC enemy. This this what they go about doing on campaign platforms. Don't they listen to President Mahama? Don't they listen to a 24-hour economy? Don't they listen to free tertiary education okay. for level hundreds? Don't they listen to agro-business development under President Mahama's region 2025? Don't they listen to President Mahama profess poultry production in this country? You know what they listen to? Yes. If you understood Akukonkete Nkete, you wouldn't have been selling a crate of eggs for 75 CD today. If you understood Akukonkete Nkete, you wouldn't have been selling one chicken for almost 250 CD today. President Mama wants to boost local poultry, and all you people go about is Akukonkete Nkete. And you see, Mr. Akufado, with the greatest of respect, your tenure has ended. You've been named the mother serpent of corruption. Retire with that corrupt act. And stop coming out to say somebody's this and somebody's that attacking President Mahama. This is the last warning to him. Martin Abidu labeled you all corrupt snakes. It is you. You are the first man to collect a bundle, brown envelope in camera. Bread like this. So if you want us to give you your history, we'll give it to you. But look, let us think about the young people. And, and Roland, anytime I sit on set and I'm speaking, I know a young man is watching me who is unemployed, yet he wants to make Mama proud. How is that going to be possible? Yeah. The game changer is a 24 hundred million Anytime dollar fintech. Uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya said any, he's elected. Uh, he levy. He's going to abolish it. Mm -hmm. He even says the betting tax will be. He got he got to almost hundred million dollar under his regime. Do you know what he used it for? They dug a national cathedral, a hole, the world's most expensive hole, fifty eight million. If he had intentions for the youth of this country, they would have used that fifty eight million to give young people jobs in this country. He sat here and said, "Oh, Baumia will become president and solve the issues." What is he doing now? That means that for eight years he's been a total waste of our time. He's wasted our time, wasted our salaries, wasted our taxes on nothing. And you go about shouting. And you see, look, I think that, Mr. Alfred Thompson, advice your people. Anytime they get the opportunity, let them appeal to the conscience of the Ghanaian people. Let them apologize. They need to beg. That fanfare of dancing, Mama Misty, and all. Look, it must come to an end. Mr. Rola Walker, let us unanimously on this platform. Advise them. We mean serious business. President Mama has spoken to Ghanaian youths. And the youth are proud. He says he's going to train one million people in the CODES program. He says he's going to build capacity of young people, even in tertiary institutions, where when they complete, they can get readily available jobs. He says the nurses and teacher trainees who are seated at home and don't have jobs, he will complete all the abandoned projects so we can post them in the work. And everybody knows that President Mama had already done sufficiently well. Why? When we live in office, unemployment in this country was around 800,000 people. You claim you've created 2.6 million jobs. If that were that was realistic, then we should have even had a deficit of unemployed people in this country. Oh, how? Because if 800,000 people are unemployed and you have come and you've created 2.6 million jobs, it means that we should have gone to the UK or even Togo to look for about 1.8 million people to come and even work for us because everybody would have had a job. But after creating 2.6 million jobs, we have an unemployment ratio at 1.8 million people. How does that tally? And you think we are children, you think we don't wash our faces. Look, you say inflation. Inflation in this country under your regime, under B B Mr. Baulaya, had risen to 58% under your regime. A gallon of petrol, Mr. Alfred Thompson, how much do you buy it? Almost 100 Ghana cities. How much does the dollar change for today? 17 cities. Yet Baumia came, came and told us in 2016, I would arrest the dollar, I would reduce the prices, the dollar is now in the queue. My brother, explain to us. Then they come and say, digitalization. And anytime I hear him say that, Look, Sheldon again asked him a question on digitalization. He says, we said you've done digitalization. Tell us the number of jobs it has created. Do you know the answer he gave Sheldon? He said, you see, when you register your land, you can now go and take a loan. So when you take the loan and then credit scoring, and you can pay a phone and be paying one one CD on the mobile phone. My, so, so, so such character wanted to, such character wanted to debate President Mahama. That man should not be taken serious. He wanted to debate President Mahama with these warped answers. I, Malik Basentali, I will say it and I will repeat it. I'm ready to debate him any day. And I will defeat him to it. Because he doesn't understand the crisis we find ourselves in. Look, Roland, one of the regrets of the Ghanaian people Malik is Constable. by having a vice president like Alaji Baumia, who simply does not understand our crisis. Look, our crisis today is not to take phone and pay one one city. 
our crisis today is not the youth of the country's land titling and TV is free. When you listen to Alfred Thompson, I just told you, take a broom and sweep whatever Alfred said. Put it on the collector and tell me whether you can get one useful thing for the youth of this country. He sat and said, free SHS, free is that what the youth want today? One jobs. President Mama is the game changer. We are bringing but the three shift system. One job, three people, three shifts. People are going to get jobs to do in this country. That is what the young people watching us this morning are thinking about. Look, somebody today, it takes over 35 cities to eat breakfast in this country. Those days, anytime I had lorry fare, 20 cities, Roland, and to learn on this, anytime I had lorry fare, 20 cities, it means I was picking dropping from Medina to airport. You know that. Today, you'll be in Trotro, and the mate will say, what, what, your charge is 20 cities, 25 cities. Ask your camera crew. Ask your people. How much of them is not owing mobile money quick loan in this country? Today, you want to send money to them. They tell you, look, uh, uh, let me give you a different number so that you send it. Today, they pick church or you pay them. And now I've said that, look, one of the difficulties in this country are people who do papa -pa jobs. You know papa -pa job? Papa -pa job is somebody who works. They pay the person's salary. But if the person were not even working, to be better. Because within two weeks, the salary is consumed. That's your description. Papa breakfast, papa afternoon, lunch. And you get a fine opportunity, Alfred, to talk to Ghanaian youth. And you come and say, oh, see, see, fair anime. Look, we must ban Baumia and Napo from campaigning in this country. They are wasting you cannot time. Decide. The voters will decide on the same person. Baumia keeps lying. Napo arrogantly insulting God and insulting everybody. And you think this is what the youth of this country is? Now, you suffer. Alfred, uh, let's take a look at the policies so far that have been outlined, including what's in the GTP. Mm. What really are the you key issues that are, are confronting yes. Ghanaians? You look at the, the data that, that has the, 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 the data the data that has been picked up so far indicates that the economy is a key worry, unemployment a worry for ordinary young people, education, and then they want to make sure that infrastructure become a consideration for all the candidates. But there's a great rebuttal. Free SHS is there. Dr. Mahmoud Obamia intends to do in $100 uh, million startups. And, uh, and of course, that also has been rebutted by John Dramani Mama, who has also outlined uh, policies as well, all targeted at them. Yes, Roland, thank you very much. And a good morning to your viewers and listeners. And I would want to say good morning to my presidential candidate, Honorable Alan John Dukuru Chairman and the team. And Saturday was a beautiful day in Accra. We painted the entire of our greater Accra yellow. We managed to sweep the numbers that surprised. What happened on Saturday? We had a beautiful walk. I invited you. You couldn't show up, but your cameras were there. Um, uh, the entire of greater Accra was yellow. And we want to use this opportunity to say a big thank you to greater Accra for the acceptance and for coming to listen to Alan Shomantin and to listen and to have an understanding of his vision for Ghana. Um, Roland, Ghana has a problem. And the problem Ghana has is not we the Ghanaians. It's not about the fact that we do not have uh, people to help solve the challenges we have. But the problem Ghana has had is with the NDC and the NPP. And we have this problem because we have allowed them to lead this country for the past 32 years. And they think that they have monopolized the uh, Ghanaian system. And that is theirs. Whether we like it or not, after every eight years, we would see one of them in power. And so when Ghanaians have actually decided to change a government because we think that the government is not performing and we have brought in another government that government also thinks that in as much as they are not performing they are better off than the previous government that we voted out and so they would want to do a comparison of negativity they would want to do a comparison of non-performance Roland, when I received the topic, it critically had to do with the policy direction on youth and employment. What any of these sides contesting for the 2024 presidential elections have in mind as to the direction we want to go, creating jobs 
for the unemployed Ghanaian youth. Realistically, what programs we have in place. And so we should rather be looking at professing solutions and putting out critical programs for Ghanaians to ask critical questions as to whether or not they are achievable. So I'll give you an example. One President Kufour was in power those days and wanted to bridge the gap between the um, first degree holders and the HND holders. Mm. What he brought about was that he ensured that the Labour Ministry put in a certain policy to make organizations employ HND holders as middle managers. All right, to be able to bridge the gap. When he realized that there were a lot of unemployment in the system, Alfred, I know, would have this history because he's been he's worked with NIB before, and so he would, that's the National What's Investment NIB? Bank. Okay. So he would have this history. When he got there, he would have realized that there were some people who were employed during Force Era that did not have first degrees. So what he did was that. He recruited SHS leavers who had good grades and could continue the education, but for various reasons couldn't continue, to the very lower officers in the banking sector and then give them the opportunity to upgrade themselves and come into the mainstream. That is a practical solution. And so when you got to a bank, I'm using that as an example because he was there, when you got to NIB at the time, you would find people with SHS certificate who got employment into the bank and through the years upgraded themselves. What's the alternative from the I'm, GTP? I'm, 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 I'm coming. Uh, we are <laughs> professing practical solutions. And so when you want to create employment, you look at practicality and whether or not it is achievable. So this is what Alan Chamantin is saying. He says that, listen, we want to create jobs. We are finding it difficult to create jobs because the institutions are saying that they do not have money to even expand so what do we do as a government to be able to give them the incentives they need to be able to create the jobs that we want them to create so if you are an institution you are an enterprise you're a company and you recruit a fresher somebody who has just graduated from the university or the polytechnic or the college and has served the national service one year period or the intention whatsoever it is and you recruit such a person government is going to give you both physical and non-physical incentives for you to reinvest that into your establishment for expansion so that you're able to recruit more so what it means is that if you make avenue or room for 10 new freshers there are benefits you are going to get for employing those freshers and those benefits will be directed into your organization for expansion so that you are able to recruit more the youth who are willing to enter into entrepreneurship all right the major problem they face is the lack of funding and so alan is saying that listen banks that allocate banks will be pushed to allocate a minimum of 10 percent of profit after tax all right towards youth oriented initiatives towards youth oriented initiative entrepreneurship programs and so if because currently as a stance if you do not have collateral and all of those things she will not be giving loans or whatsoever with, with financial assistance with, by the banks to be able to push into your businesses. And that is a problem you are facing. I am a young graduate. I've just come out of school. All right. And I, I have, I want to register a business. I want to go in, venture into my own agribusiness. No bank will be willing to give me that money I need. But Alan is saying that there would be a policy in place that would push the banks to invest at least a minimum of 10 percent profit after task into this initiative and this would help support our young brothers and sisters to grow their businesses mm. these are practical solutions to the current unemployment 
situations you are facing because it's done in other jurisdictions all right and when these loans are given you see if you are being given a business loan between 35 to 45 percent currently that is what it stands and then mm. we have a banker here so he understands mm. the business loan is between 35 to 45 percent your business desk has done a documentary on it before if we give these loans, the current the current rates are the best. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. ask you over 35 percent yes. yeah, that's what i'm saying 35 to 45 percent business rate and if we are able to bring this interest rate to a single digit of which alan has assured ghanians he would do then it means that we are putting our business young business entrepreneurs in the position to compete with the bigger ones now you would also have the opportunity as a young entrepreneur to be able to compete to an extent with bigger organizations in terms of local contract bidding all right so let's say that there is a bid out there that government wants to do we have three four five young business enterprises mm. you come together then we are able to give you a competitive advantage on the other hand we would also attach you to these bigger enterprises to help you grow and so any bigger enterprise that has a young business attached to it in times of bidding for a government contract or project would have an advantage over an a bigger enterprise that is going solo without our young so we are putting in practical measures to grow our young entrepreneurs and these are realistic measures that are to i mean you you, you can attest because this is done in other jurisdictions if you go to the americas and other places we have what we call the minority businesses all right these minority businesses belongs to um, um people with disability belongs to um, young entrepreneurs it belongs to um, the black community you understand and they attach them to bigger organizations and help them get businesses that would help them expand so roland these are practical solutions and i'm telling you this yes and i have a belief and confident in alan because he's done it before when he was minister for trade and industry what did he do he established what we call the enable youth facilities we built 58 of these enable youth facilities all right now before as at the time he was leaving the ministry we had 28 of these enabled youth facilities completed and um, um machines and equipment being installed you mean he did all this under the ekufado led government of course Where he are did they? it under the Akufa and is there and he did it as a minister and i'm i'm establishing the fact that it was not government money these were projects he sat down thought of went out there to look for external sources grants to be able to help us establish them this he pushed through with rural enterprises project this is not government this is not minister of finance um, budget allocation whatsoever no so this is an individual who was given a ministerial position that he used his brains and his hard work and his network to be able to establish he established what we call the common user facility Holland, this common user facility, if you go to Savlugu, we have one there. If you go to a place like in Crown Quanta, we have one there. The rice processing, if you go to uh, Sifi, Akontombra, we have one there. Now, this was for the youth. So, this is a man who has established, and this is a man who has proven that indeed when given the opportunity he'll be able to bring jobs into this country we established what we call the technology solution centers before then we had what we call the rural technology facilities all right 21 of them they were idle nothing when alan came and he thought of indeed walking the talk of bringing this technology and innovation talk into reality he went out there to look for money for us to be able to establish the technology solution centers and this was purely tech to give opportunity and support to our young entrepreneurs who want to venture into technology so if we have given we've been given this opportunity to actually push our 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 agenda for the youth i think that the two should be able to tell us what they have done what they will do just as i have stated mm. and then we can move forward but this banter this is what is creating the problems we have in ghana and i 
it is this morning I have been given and reassurance. Well, the question is, Alan was part of the Kufado led government, so you can't be reprobating and why you, why you speak like this? I love it because you see, it helps me to make you understand that we have a collective good and we have an individual good. So we have that collective accountability, and in that collective accountability, we have an individual accountability. Let us sit down as a country, let us pick them okay. one after the other. Let Thompson. every individual, I, 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 I've been going Roland. through the, you, the, you the, 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 the no, let me land. Okay, you will have to give every individual an opportunity mm. to be able to account for the responsibility he was given and this is an accountability alan has given to ghanians my, my question is you can't you you, you can't be criticizing Roland, media and general expressing is big. and expect media no, general no, is big today no media general example no, Please, media, I would, I would, I would, use another I would, I would entity use media i'm saying i'm saying i'm saying media general saying, is big support, please please media I'm general saying, goes beyond you, 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 you letting me go you, 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 media I'm general i'm saying i'm saying the question the question but you are held responsible for the seat in which you are seated will not be able to so if another program is failing is roland walker going to be held responsible if when kind of furiata was minister for um finance and the economy failed what did alan tell him what did alan tell him alan did his bit as minister for trade and industry what did he do he was part of the economic manager have you seen the video oh, the best uh, brains for alaji was the chairman for the economic Who is man management team who is alaji we have only one alaji contestant for this presidential <laughs> election who we have only one roland do you have a title roland are you letting me come in okay thank you i get your point now you're talking about dr mahmoud about here and uh, so i'm just going through your, your your manifesto and i've seen that there are a number of um, policy propositions to ensure resilience business friendly economy and there are jobs creation uh, options and policy propositions yeah. for young people jobs uh, also for young people in tech and then young people having opportunity to tr transform the main traditional sectors like agri etc how do we see that coming to fruition okay thank in you relation much. to what already has already been done thank you very much i am glad you've seen that a lot has been done i'll just take two or three minutes to respond to certain untruths that have been peddled by my dear brother here he talked about kojo sheldon eh? the same kojo sheldon who told Ghanaians that he was paid to come and ask certain questions under Mohammed's uh, just the media media that's why he didn't go and this same kojo sheldon has come to our a media encounter or youth encounter with um, his excellency the vice president but he wasn't paid that's why he came and he asked questions and there were series of questions that were asked so if you come and sit here and you lie through your teeth and tell us that oh the Would questions that were asked said that he he was paid to come said what? to the the, the youth he said event. what he said that he was called mm -hmm. and that he was giving questions to come and ask so is that paid he was giving questions to exactly. Ghana. I'm, I'm only saying that he, di he didn't he say, say that he was paid. Okay, so let's take the paid out. What ah, about the questions? A lie. What about the questions? Ah. That he said he was giving questions. Ah. Did he say it or not? Yeah, Tom he said that they gave him he questions that, yeah. to come and ask. He's and he said he wasn't going to do it. Paid. He wasn't going I, to do I, it. I do was know he, that, I do know that it's on public record. Yes. That Jojo Pariano came to deny. Oh, he did? Yes, he did. That they didn't it, give it's a matter of public record. So it's this is the same question. This is the same it's person. Gone. They say that they ask questions. And you see, if you don't know how to deal with series of questions, when they give you series of questions, you don't decide that oh, because he talked about this topic, you have you are going to appropriate that topic to another this question that was asked. That is not how it works. When you are giving series of questions, I don't give you about five to ten questions. So you take them one after another. You write them down and take them one after another and respond to them. So what he was saying that oh, and he was asked about uh, this the youth employment and was talking about land. I, 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 I seriously, let's get serious. Let's get serious. He is not a presidential candidate who, when you point fingers at him, that maybe the economy has insult, got, Because I'm if coming. insults come, I, I don't know how I can contain it. Please, I'm let's, not going to, I'm let, not going to let's insult be very, Let's be no, very I'm not different in our language. So, I'm not that, going to so that we don't set a listen. tone. So that we don't Roland, set a tone that Roland, becomes Roland, the position of the center for backlash. You sat here and you watched him Baumia a liar. Please. I have never called his candidate. You, you call John Mahama an incompetent person. But he's and, incompetent. And, okay, great. So please he's go. He's incompetent. So please and go. And I'm on. proving it to you so that he's incompetent. And I'm saying so that let's use language. language. Mr. Alfred Thompson, let's use him. No, please. Let's use when language. When he was calling people stupid, nobody said anything. Please. 
Please when just use language on uh, this platform. You call John Mahama has not spoken. Former, uh, John Mahama has not spoken when, on this platform. When the former, uh, what do you Mr. Call Alfred Thompson, the former, uh, Mr. Alfred Thompson, Mr. Mr. Alfred Thompson, please. Let's lay. 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 Let's Roland, the, the, you can't the, be doing this. The, no, please. You I'm not doing anything. What you want no, to hear and this, what you don't want to this hear. This is a media when journal I talk platform. about the grass. We have that you didn't get water. We have and you were saying things that I didn't say. You kept quiet right, and you watched. And, I was expecting and to ask if you John questions. Mahama is on a campaign platform, mm -hmm. that is not a representation of the editorial policy of media general. And mm -hmm. let's be very specific about that. So I say, let's lay a ground rule. And I'm saying, so I far, am not going to insult So far, anyone. we have we have we have adhered to the rules i'm saying that let's be decorous in our language in such a way that our audiences will listen to us Mr. Thompson, so, continue thank you very much i am saying that when you have a former president you say anything about him and he tells you as he told martin amedu that he was stupid to call him go one and then on baumia's own he calls him a stupidity to say you are not going to talk about the economy it tells you the type of leadership we are looking. We are he looking didn't at. call Dr. Oh, Mahmoudou Baumia. You don't need to mention this, that Dr. So Baumia has to say before about you Clinton say that. administration oh, campaign. Roland, can you stop rhetoric. this? And then you, that, please no, stop please, this. Let's no. Know. When he was speaking, he was saying a lot of untruths. You kept quiet and watched him. Please, you, even when things please, are you can, said here, you can say many things said here. outside no. this platform. But I'm saying, even when I talked about I'm the grass, he said that is the idea of the end. We have a presidential correspondent as well as others who cover the various I don't think you are being fair in this discussion. I'm being very fair. No, you are not. So, Mr. Alfred I'll tell Thompson, you, you don't debate me on what I'm saying. I am saying. not debating you. Let the audience you. decide on what they want to hear. I have you. So, let yes. the audience decide. I am saying that... What you are doing, you are just far, taking our time off. I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, the former president did not insult Dr. Mahmoud Dubamia or call him... When you tell someone stupid... Him. It's he made, that you are not going to talk about the economy. You think it's not, it's not a... Campaign are we in a Clinton campaign here? Are we in a Clinton okay, campaign Please here? continue. Oh, we are in a Ghanaian please campaign. Continue. Are we going to vote for Mr. Bill Clinton? Continue. Well, let's be serious, please. Continue. continue. Now, you are talking about jobs. If you get the government of Nana Kufado in the health sector, apart from the schools that we've built all across this country, in the health sector, hospitals and clinics and healthcare infrastructure started and completed by Nanado including IPEP clinics are 111 up to 47. It tells you that when doctors finish, when nurses finish, they'll get jobs to do. He talked about nurses placement. Nurses placement from 2012 to 2016. What did they do? What was their record? When we took over, we had to take more than three or four years of placement and make sure that we have placed them in good positions or good institutions for them to work. We didn't complain. Because it was part of the package. When they told us that we'll see how we even get fuel to run our systems, we went all out and made sure that we got them. Then we come to projects that were started by Kufo, but was never touched for the last eight years or the, um, the eight years within NDC. There are nine of them, right from Ga East Municipal Hospital to the Saraga District Hospital. We have completed all of them and they are running. Then you go to hospitals. Clinics and healthcare infrastructure started by the Akufado led government, but yet to be completed. There are 12 of them, including IPPs, there are 17 of them. As for the agenda 111, there are 111 hospitals that are being built. I can show you the book, don't worry. You are, see, you are spying. You, you can mention as many as you want. <laughs> <laughs> I can show you when you finish, you can look at them. Then we talk about health Where hospitals moves? and healthcare projects no, started by NDC and completed by MP. There are 17 of them. Mm. 17. Mm. We didn't leave them abandoned. Mm. Like they left the Kufo projects abandoned. And all these hospital projects, all these healthcare infrastructure, you get people working there. There are the number of people who go there and work there. There are jobs being created. We don't throw jobs away. It's not jobs that you say that, oh, we cannot find them. You find them doing the health people talking about it. I remember we had a meeting with some of the doctors and they were saying that we showed them all the projects and said, wow, we've done all this and we don't even sell our message. But we are focused on making sure that we deliver rather than going there and printing books that we create images that were not even possible in those times. That is not what we are looking at. We are looking at making sure that when you go to maybe somewhere like Aroma, you will see the project over there. 
you will see the project and i'll give you the soft copy you can go through everything let your cameraman go from district to district from region to region and check on all these projects they are there feely feely nobody is hiding them we are not doing images and put it in our book and come and tell you that oh these projects are things that we are doing so when we are talking about building and about empowering people when we are talking about policies that even under the vice president and i'm glad my brother here said that oh apart from the government collective responsibility we have individual responsibilities and that is why we keep on asking you said dr Bamiya cannot debate mahama agreed because when he has been able to under the vice presidential distance slot he's done 33 projects initiated 33 individual ideas and policies that is helping to build and develop ghana and under yours what we could remember was that the president called on the white paper on you so that to investigate the Eba scandal and other scandals that you've committed. It tells you that this guy has nothing to offer. We won't run away from our responsibilities. We won't shut anything off. What we will tell you, yes, we stand there and we always say that even in our government there were challenges. We are still facing challenges and we will overcome them one after another. But what we will do is, is that we will, our mandate to the Ghanaians, we will honor it and we will make sure each and every citizen will get what is due them. Um, How do we transition to make sure we create the right policies and then the jobs that the young people did? Roland, the coming, coming from the NDC the, administration the and then the manifesto. The 33 policies he's talking about okay. are fuel prices at 100 Ghana city parts. The dollar at 17 is a part of those 17 achievements of Baumia. 10,000 missing bags of lily rice at the port stolen by Baumia in his cronies, those in his office, Kek or, me, or say, Mesa, we still at the office. Is it part of the 33? Appearance suit by Charles Ebu Boy. So 250,000. Can I make my point? 250,000 dollars is taking before you meet be Baumia to discuss Galamse. Is a part of the projects. Today, Mecca going to hatch 75,000 Ghana cities. Is a part of Baumia's 33 achievements. No, I want to know. You should tell me the achievements you are talking about. You've no, collapsed no, the economy. You have failed the country. Youth unemployment is on the rise. And you think that. 33 achievements. 33. Uh, other part of the 33 achievements, 1.8 million Ghanaian youths are unemployed. Is a part of the 33 uh, achievements of Alaji Bahamian. So please, let's put those things on a, on a hold. And you say, you have done what? Open the book. I was waiting for you to give it to me. Thankfully, you stated in the book, project commenced by NDC and completed under the regime of NDC. You are not ashamed. NDC. Only. Now show me projects, a hospital. Completed one. I want one hospital. That was started by you and completed by you. One, I don't want to. Please bring it. Open I it. Open it. I'm here. I'm here. My I integrity. I said my integrity on the line. Open it. I mentioned for So you. open the page. Why are you running away from your book? Open Malik, it and show Malik, me one. Malik, last week. Yeah, last week. Yeah. Open yes. it. Open no, no, the no, no, page. Yes, okay, open okay. the page for me. Open the page. You are running away from the book. The green book was brought. And in the green book, it says there were artistic impressions. KJTR Market was in the green book. Is it life or not life? Rage Hospital was in the Green Book. Is it life or not life? The Bank of Ghana Hospital was in the Green Book. An achievement of John Mahama. Is it life or not life? Kotokraba Market was in the Green Book. Is it life or not life? So they were live projects. Show me one project in the Green Book. That was an artistic impression. You are going round. Uh, and, and what saddens my heart is that Baumia says, Sorry. I've created an app for trotro drivers. I've created an app for watching sales. If he is now Google Play Store, he should create an app for stabilizing the dollar. He should create an app for reducing unemployment. He should create an app so that if the trade workers can get good salaries and the economy can be stabilized. Those are the apps you want. You can't turn yourself into Google Play Store and creating bogus apps for who, who, who bought a trotro and pays through an app. So please, that one must also be on the whole. Look, what we are saying is that Ghanaians should listen to a nation builder who says he has a solution to create jobs in this country. Businesses are willing to expand. Businesses are willing to recruit people. John Mahama says, I'll meet you halfway. I'll reduce your taxes. I'll reduce your electricity tariffs. And I'll provide you with security. So you can recruit young people into the economy. You came into office. Bet and tax. Today, you win bet and they take 10% from it. Alaji Baumia, who said he doesn't eat pork. Today, when they cook the, pork, the pig soup, he wants to drink the soup. You don't like bet. Yet when the man wins, you take 10%. He said when, take it off. when he loses, he will take it off, shamelessly saying that. Please, Roland, you are you passed a tax. 
and you tell us, vote for me. When I come, I'll take it off. Gorilla politics. We've gone beyond Gorilla that. Politics. Gorilla politics. We've gone beyond that. Look, you brought emission tax. Taxes on things. Bola tax. COVID-19 tax. Taxed everything. Very lazy approach of raising revenue in this country as head of economic management team. And you come and tell us, vote for me. When I come, I'll remove it. I think I need to believe you on that. John Mahama, when he was going to digitalize the system in this, the systems in this country, after the road and street <coughs> namings and the addresses that were built, he built the Accra Digital Center, true or false. That was supposed to equip youth and train a lot of youth in ICT under the NDC administration. Tell me what you did to it. After you came into office, tell me the coders that have been trained. If John Mahama had won 2016, by now we would have had more than 1 million coders in this country. Because he started the Accra Digital Center. And that was the main intention, to equip people in ICT and build them into reputable institutions. Today you come and sit down and you say, you have done digitalization, everything. So, so, bogus apps, you turn yourself, like I said, into Google Play Store. Good. This is it. Hospitals, clinics, healthcare infrastructure that started and completed under... I'm coming. I, I, let, let me just do this. That under, under what? Under what? Under 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 Started See, and completed. UGMC. Who started UGMC? Yes, UGMC. Hold on, yes, hold on, hold on. Say it's two. I beg your pardon. There's a difference between. Oh, 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 relax. Yes, relax. 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 You see, I'm not going to it. He says that he has to come in. What is he reading there? Come on, hold on. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Your end has come here. Hold on. Please. University of Ghana Medical Center. Whether phase 10 or phase 100, who started it? Hold on. Who started it? Was it was under the NDC administration. What, what was the point with this? What is it doing here? Started what, under what, that's, what that's, that's 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 Somebody has started his project. Started and completed Hold and on. Started Somebody has started his project. You, I told you they have not completed a single. That's why it was scared to get you not first of Ghana. Hold on. Bolgatanga. Hold on. Bolgatanga Regional Hospital. This was done by President Mahama. You can't call anybody. So she but this is phase three. This phase three. Look at that. So, so that means that all the hospitals they put here, they say phase four, phase two. All the you see the hospitals here, they were all commenced by John Dramani Mahama. There is no single hospital they began and completed. I sat here. Bank of Ghana was was started by John Mahama and completed by John Mahama. You guys still projects and put in it. I knew that. But it's not wrong to continue. Thank you very much. Nobody has said that. Thank you very much. I that is even John Mahama. Perfect. And you continue that. Absolutely. And that is why I'm saying that if you come and continue the project, say I continue it. And I said mention one hospital that was started and completed under your tenor. You get that University of Ghana Medical Center. Who commenced it? Look, he's jumping down again. Look, look, my brother. So he's mentioned none of them are all these hospitals are NBC. You, I said even investor of Ghana Medical Center as part of the achievement. Phase two. You shamelessly come. Phase you have you have borrowed over I seven seven hundred and fifty billion. Can, can you allow me, please? This attitude it, will not you. help you. Respect. No, please, it's okay. Please. Okay. Yeah, so let's, let, let's not Please. have our tempers go high. Oh, no, no, no. You and, 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 when you were speaking, I was quiet. And, 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 and Alfred, when you were speaking, I, 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 I have emphasized and you then much. also this, said this is a concern. This attitude Thank of you. I'm glad you did that. Did you give me one yes, I, yes. I caution no, I that this that. thing you've hanged on your neck will give you trouble. You sat here and said Kojo Sheldon was was paid to come and to come I've to the NDCs and manifest it. You lied. I've corrected it. And you, Lina, and you, and you are telling me you corrected it. And then she will These are the lies exactly. we don't accept on this exactly. platform. Exactly. You're going to take a bounty exactly. dog chain and wear your neck. It's, it's, and then exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So please, the youth of this country need free tertiary education. Exposed. Oh, can you, Roland? This, what, what, what kind of attitude please, is this? Please, for me. The, you said the youth of this country, they need... Mr. Alfred Thompson. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Malik, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yes. Please. I, I, you said the youth of this country, Malik. This is the same thing you did. You were contesting with Nacho. Oh, please say, no, let's not go there. Let's you not go there. Please, this is what they do. And this one, this is what they do. You, you, said, the youth, this you said the youth of this country. country. The youth of this country need free tertiary education for level hundreds. And that is what they are looking out for. The youth of this country need to invest in agric. And President Mahama says he's bringing agribusiness so that people could boost the agricultural sector of this country. The youth of this country move need to move into industrialization. And that's why President Mahama says all the collapsed companies that you are selling would arrest your people, would get the companies back, and the youth of this country would be enrolled so they could work very well and then they could get good jobs in this country. The dollar and the petroleum prices 
as President Mama has said, would definitely be reduced and stabilized so that businessmen could at least plan ahead of time. It's sad that even King de Japan lambasted their government and told them that one time he was owing someone $10,000 before the man could come at that time he only needed eight thousand sorry at that time the dollar was changing at seven cities so he only needed seventy thousand right to change and get ten thousand dollars before the man could come into this country the dollar was now changing at 15 cities he needed one fifty thousand to get ten thousand dollars in order to pay for it which meant that he ran at a total loss there are many businessmen in abuso kind today who are struggling like Kennedy Japan was struggling at the regime. And today you have the F country, you and Baumia, to come and stand before Ghanaian people and tell us, Monfasti and Amame, vote for me, please. The businessmen, Kama Group, like I said, and to land on this, may his soul continue to rest in peace. What has Kama got to do with it? The CEO of the Kama Group has passed on. He said his pensions, money he had saved to survive during his pension days, had been restructured. Why was it restructured? It was restructured because you, Baumia, recklessly spent money nanado was flying private jets left and right center and this country went into a junk status they had to restructure his pensions the man said he's virtually irresponsible today this is not a man who lived a bad life he lived a good life but because of your ineptitude and because of your visionless government his pensions had to be restructured the man has passed on uh -huh. maybe because he couldn't afford pension drugs for the first time a chief justice can demonstrated against her own government because they are taking their monies from the bank and they restructured our debts in this country. Roland, I sit here and I feel the pain of many people, like I say. People are completing school. You go to school for over 20 years and you graduate and you cannot get a job. It saddens my heart. I see young people out there who cannot afford three square meals. It saddens my heart. So we are saying that the man to solve this issue is the nation board, right. John <laughs> Dramani. So I have this one from... Um, um, our correspondent um, from and he says mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, New Day producer kindly signal Roland that the 60 bed capacity Salaga hospital is not completed as claimed by one of the panelists in fact the project has been stalled since 2019 there, there hasn't been a contractor on site did you, did you mention it? You, 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 uh, you mentioned Salaga you lied too much this guy lies too much this lie is must stop look at it you mentioned Salaga here you see how you have been exposed shame on you no 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 this one our correspondent did that oh please it's not oh my lip when you and Alfred are here you make Alfred Alfred and Malik please Okay, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You mentioned it as an ongoing yes, project. Okay. So, um, our correspondent is saying. I said it. In fact, the project has stalled since 2019. There has been. Oh. Look at it. There's a salga auto. Take it. Alfred, Malik, I won't watch. Stop it. Oh, Malik. Malik, 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 Malik. When you came to Accra, you were as credible. You were as credible as a flop. Please, let's stop. Let's stop this. Let's stop this. This one is coming from my Pia Fu. I'll let you have it. That's why before we go, my product promised that. Um, Please. Um, please. Uh, Kofi Aflu says, please yes, ask Mr. to tell us one thing. The project, their location specifically. Salaga, I'm already getting the signal. It's not ongoing. And so she corrects himself. Ask him about the 50... Uh, ask, ask him about the 52.5 billion Ghana CD tax revenue stolen from GCB Bank PLC in 2020. And then also, let me just read a couple of um, uh, them. I have this one from... Um, Master Planner Junior, my viewers, uh, you know, I like Master Planner Junior. So he says, um, Nana Baumia, they started and completed more hospitals than Mahama. Some are a Contomar Hospital, <laughs> Bogoso, Elobo, Mpoho, mm -hmm. Nswaim, Wasa, Dunkwo, Veta in the Volta region, So Manya, Tolong, Sola, Master Planner Junior. And then I have, I have more, all of them are there. Salaga okay. District, 68% complete. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you very much. The, the center contractor since, since 2019 has, has, has hasn't been there. The things I've said are the things Please, so let me read comments. Let me. So, so, so this is, a, is that the, is that the project? Uh, we even did a so full story on the abandoned Salaga. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Why is oh, the two of you, please. Why is this OGT? 
Please. When you are exposed, you are Please, please, please. please. How, have, how have I been exposed? I'm it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. So even the MP was complaining about it. All right. That's right. So that has been... The next uh, that has been, fully completed. That's right. No, you said it was ongoing? Yes. Okay. No, that has been established. Oh, it's okay. Thank it's you okay. very it's much. Okay. It's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. Um, no, General Hospital. What uh, happened to At Chiasa Hospital. This, one is, th this one is coming from um, <laughs> Dinko Evans Garu. He says... On the third day, when Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia was beating the youth at 5 p.m., he should have been at that peace event that was organized by the Christian and Charismatic Councils. But he sent his vice presidential candidates. While well, the presidential candidate of the NDC and the others were there, who is more committed to the peace? Remember, eight people died in the last election. Let's not all behave like Trojan horses and ostriches. Now, uh, this one is coming from Mr. Teddy. Mr. Teddy, good morning to you. He says, Roland, I was analyzing the claim of 2.6 million jobs supposedly created. Assuming each job represents a small enterprise employing just 10 people. That will translate to 26 million employed individuals on, in the value chain. Remind me, what's Ghana's current population? Mm. Okay, and then um, I have more, more messages. So this one also is coming from uh, Delhi. Uh, Delhi says, uh, Malik, you are, Malik and you, the two of you are firing each other. So, okay, well, that's firing. So, um, Anthony, Anthony says, Please, the Peta Hospital in the Ketu North constituency was started by NDC in 2016. It was 68% complete at the time when we handed over to MPP. Please tell Alfred to get his fast. I think that he's saying that they are continuing. I think that's what yeah. you're saying. I, said, continue. I, mean, I named the projects which, that which we hospital inherited. Was that? It's continue. Continue. It's a continue. It's a continuing project. Mm. Uh, I continue. mentioned the number of projects under the Please. government that we took over. You okay, so this one is coming from Moses. So yeah. is the MPP now claiming that UGMC is their project? Project no, he said phase. It's a phase two. Yes, yes phase two. Even Kolebu, we built a neurological. 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 Yes, I'm saying that you, um, you haven't. You haven't said. You, you, you haven't said. That. That. You, you, you haven't said. You, you, you haven't said. Please, 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 please. I, I, I promise to give the last time. Eric Ameto Kwame says about seven forty-seven. Look at that. It's not all of them. Why is education such a big worry for us? If we as teachers have solved all the problems in the education sector. Uh, sure. uh, free I think goes a long way to help many people. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Sampi Yali Thank says, you since 2012, the MPP has been using free SHS sure. as a campaign. But the free SHS, nobody should have gone to, but for free SHS, it means nobody should have gone to school. We have an incremental population. So certainly there will always be backlogs. Today, because of the bad economy, parents are paying so much even for the items on the prospectus. So Mr. Alfred Thompson, my hometown mom, how do you explain students spending just two months in school or sometimes a month and a half and being promoted to the next class? The free SHS is a bad implementation of a, an intended good policy. Please, let me just give you um, four minutes on this. Four minutes for you to end on, on this. Four, four minutes. Four minutes, then I will not speak. They spoke for more than four minutes. You no, used, but I timed you, please. No, no. So, so we we're, were doing clarification just for now. Please go ahead, go ahead. Because go if ahead. they come in, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll do it. Star four three nine hash. It's cash out, please. Whilst you are doing this, you All cash right. out. Star so four three nine hash, please. I want to start off from this point. The in 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 job creation or in giving an assurance to the citizenry that indeed you would be able to create jobs for your mm, people. Mm. It means that you should be able to speak to issues and you should have been able to put in programs that would be practically accepted. Roland, Alan created what we call the AFCFTA. It is accepted. The AFCFTA themselves, they know that he's the main architect behind the AFCFTA. Now, he managed as Minister for Trade and Industry and Ghana won the bid to have the Secretariat of the AFCFTA here. That is putting the entire of Africa on one market. Mm -hmm. The current e-commerce market size of Africa is in excess of $270 billion. $270 billion. billion. That's huge. So having the Secretariat of the AFCFTA in Accra here in Ghana 
means that you would have in excess of 270 million and that million was facilitated dollars. by alan he's the main brain behind as trade this. minister but when he was at au that was when he drew the entire structural design of the efcfta now when he was minister for trade and industry for ghana that was when efcfta was ready and he managed to make ghana win the bid and to bring it here so these are jobs that are that can be created through industrialization now nobody nobody on this table is debating the fact that for us to be able to ensure that jobs are in this country for the youth to do we will, the best way to go is industrialization whether it's agribusiness it will still end up in industrialization and if we are talking about somebody who is a brain undoubtedly in terms of industrialization then in Ghana, we are talking about just one person, Alan John Kujo Tremantin. Roland, we have a government that banks needed 9 billion Ghana cities to survive. The government used in excess of 20 billion Ghana cities to collapse these banks and to create unemployment. So, you could have restructured the banking system without collapsing these banks i don't understand Re wasn't alan part of the economic management team you keep saying this and when I the decisions were being taken uh, that we have a collective responsibility and we have individual responsibility alan was not finance minister you mean alan wants to extricate himself from we are not hitting ourselves from anything the point is this just as you are doing that you do not want me to use media general as an example when another program is collapsing a new day is working. Do I hold you responsible for that program that is collapsing? No. So why would you want to so hold you responsible? responsible? We have a, a, the head of EMT. We have the finance minister. Uh, the bank is the banking sector and the trade and industry. No, it is not. So why then do you want to hold Alan responsible for the collapse of banks? I'm not holding and I'm saying person. that we needed nine billion <laughs> to restructure, to keep jobs going. Yet we use 21 billion to create unemployment. You understand? And I'm telling you that if indeed we wanted to hold and make these banks profitable, we would have. And I'll give you an example. We were in Ghana here at the beginning of the year when they wanted to sell five hotels. They wanted to collapse five hotels. Create they wanted unemployment. To sell, they wanted to collapse. Choose which word you want to use to create unemployment when we fought as Ghanaians, we came together to fight them and they were not able to undertake that mischievous adventure what happened yesterday labadi beach hotel it was published in the dailies that they had presented a 16.5 million ghana cities uh, dividend to snet we still have the md of snet at post we still have the board at post a business that we were told that was not profitable so this makes me to believe and understand that if indeed these banks we wanted to keep these banks going if we wanted to keep these banks working we would have been able to use that nine billion the banks needed restructure their management and operational systems and these banks would have by now given birth to more branches for more uh, jobs to be created. Roland, Alan established what we call the business regulatory reforms. In 2017-2018, these business regulatory reforms were, were was, was launched. This gave Ghana a positive rating on the bank of um, World Bank credit rating systems. Roland, if you talk and you do not take action, there is nothing that can be done. Across the world, Ghanaians were complaining that getting access to information to establishing businesses, getting access to these agencies when you want to establish businesses was going to be difficult and was difficult. Alan as trade minister then created the business resource centers, established these business resource centers and put all of them on one platform. So you could just sit in the comfort of your home, whether in Ghana or out of Ghana, 
go on to the business resort um, resource uh, reform uh, regulatory reforms mm. uh, app do your e-registration do your e-inquiry like everything. what is on the screen like what is on the screen now so all this, this is what we established alan said he was going to establish three million jobs for Ghanaian youth mm. he walked the talk he created an app the 3mg ghana app that go onto this app alan has created an app eh? for job creation he said we needed the data and we are taking steps in having the data before we come into government you understand me if they want to create jobs they need to know which sectors mm. have the ability to actually have the people being employed we need to know the sectors that the persons wants to go if you upload your cv onto this app then we are able to put them in sectors it becomes easy when you have these data and you want to push into these industries and so if we have a man who is walking the talk and we have people who go to stand on platforms and dance and we have others who go to stand on platforms and just talk then we need to make our choices right and that is why somebody like me a young Ghanaian would want to follow Alan Tramantin and vote for him in December 2024 Lawyer Richmond Roxon, thank you for always watching the show. We're always grateful. He says the government's claim of creating 2.6 million jobs cannot be true. If indeed the government has created that number of jobs, we should see an increase in taxpayers and then also a significant increase when it comes to SNET contributors. I think that's some concern. We've always met our revenue target, oh, uh, lawyer. And so uh, let, let me just run through a couple as well. Uh, for Kafui, for Kafui says, uh, please tell Mr. Alfred Thompson that I like him so much, but uh, he is frustrated because his government uh, it's it's really issue. Get him. Okay. He says he's not frustrated. For Kafui, please be careful. The next time, Adi Kupson says, um, we need an app for CD stabilization. Just, I need one second. Well, fact check. We're taking a break. Comment of the account 